So as you may or may not know, February has been our month of style for us here at Ickle Bubba. So we thought it'd be brilliant to round that up with our guest, Charlotte, to just chat about everything and about styling your little one and how we can style our bump and feel amazing still. Um, so Charlotte, without further ado, can you please introduce yourself and just, you know, tell everybody about your experience and, you know, how you got to become a kid stylist? Yes. So I've been in the fashion industry for about 20 years, more than 20 years now. Um, I started off at a magazine called Sugar, a teenage girls magazine, which some of you hopefully remember. Hopefully I'm not that old. Um, yes, yeah, so I was a women's stylist for years and years and years. And then I put my back out on a photo shoot on some sand dunes. Um, so I couldn't shoot anymore and ended up getting a job at Mother and Baby magazine. Really fun and I loved it. And then after my first child, I carried on doing some women's styling, some baby and kids. And then after my second baby, I thought, actually, I just love doing baby and kids stuff. So just carried on doing baby and kids fashion. So I do editorial photo shoots for magazines. I do work with brands. So um, lots of the big kids, baby fashion brands. So lots of lovely baby shoots where I hold really cute babies, um, which made me really broody. So I had a third child. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so I've got three children as well. They are seven, five, and nearly one. So, yeah. Okay, so you have your hands full. Yeah, I do. And a dog. <laughs> I think oh, wow. The oddest word. So, obviously, you mentioned like mainly kids styling there, but you've obviously got your like wealth of experience in styling women's wear as well. That's what so, I, I just. Yeah, yeah, so I thought, you know, why don't we kick off with how it all begins, like with the bump? Yeah, um, yeah we've got we've had quite a lot of few questions basically that have come in before this that are from a lot of mums who are in that stage where they might just feel a little bit bloated, they don't quite yeah. look pregnant. So what would your tips be for, for those mums at the moment? I think it depends on your personal style a lot because some people obviously like to show off their body, so go for more body con things. I'd always say at that point when it could be that you've just had a large meal to go for something that sort of nips you in just under and around the bust and then flares out a bit. And yeah, so for something that fits in and then out, so in and out, and then something that's more slimming on the legs so that it's still showing off your original figure. Um, yeah, but it really depends on your style, I think. I think I personally love quite loose, boho -y things anyway. So I'd always wear something like, actually, should I check it? Um, just like a, a looser top and then just tuck it in, just do a little French tuck because then it's kind of just, it's accentuating your bump. I hope I don't have too much of a bump still now, probably do. Um, but yeah, it's just showing the bump, but kind of still your original style. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm- Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think obviously that's the stage where you're a bit self-conscious and you may be trying to hide it as well. So I think yeah. that's perfect advice. Like, you know, you don't want to suddenly start wearing something completely different because you're probably going to draw more attention to yourself then. Yeah. Um, okay. Also, just wearing something a bit more fitted over the top of something looser. So be it a, just like a V-neck T-shirt or something and then a more fitted blazer or fitted jacket. So it's sort of nipping you in, but just like accentuating the little tiny bump a bit. It's always really and how about when you get further along then when bump starts to bloom um <laughs> probably in between the stage what would you say then i think a lot of the same things you can still wear if you like bodycon and are confident then it's the perfect time to really show off a good neat bump um but then yeah i always love the boho style so would go more floaty and um all a bit yeah bohemian and lovely and um also things like jumpsuits there's some great jumpsuits now and dungarees i'm a big fan of dungarees anything that isn't too tight around the middle but it's still quite flattering and quite cool um yeah i think there's uh, there seems to be so much pressure where people feel that they have to wear full maternity gear as soon as they get pregnant whereas a lot of the brands now a lot of the high street as well you can just buy a couple of sizes bigger and it still works um, and then you've got brands like Clary and Peg um, and Beyond Nine that do jumpsuits and dungarees that are specifically for pregnancy, but then carry on afterwards. So they still look good after you've had the baby. And a lot of them are breastfeeding friendly as well, which is really good if you do go down that route. 
But I think it's really interesting what you said then about how people might feel that pressure to buy a whole new wardrobe. And obviously, you're pregnant for such, such a short space of time. Yeah. You want to be making sure that you're saving that money for maternity leave or for baby. So you, you are quite conscious that you haven't got a fortune to spend. Yeah. How would you say you can try and adapt your own wardrobe, maybe? Well, I think I always borrowed a lot of my husband's clothes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice jumpers or T-shirts that were just that bit looser. Um, and then wore something more fitted over the top, be it a belted coat or a little leather jacket or something like that. Um, or shirts, men's shirts can also look really cool with a little bit of a turk. Um, also, um, I'm sure a lot of people know it, but I always think everybody does, not everybody does. Um, the hair bubble trick on your jeans. Where... Well, I didn't know that, but someone told me that, and it yeah, definitely... I you. I've, I've actually put a hair bubble in my jeans, ready. Oh, wow. If you're happy to show us, please do. Here we go. So to make your jeans last longer, when they won't do up over the bump anymore, you just wrap the bobble around the button, twist it round, pop it through the hole, and voila! And then you can keep wearing your jeans until you get nearer to the end of, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can't do that for the nine month bump, but for a good six months, I'd say, you can probably get away with wearing your own jeans and any other trousers as well. In terms of like afterwards then, mm -hmm. well, and with baby weight, I know, I know for me, like my bump didn't just go on my stomach, you know, the, the baby weight definitely spread a bit further than that. So how would you go about, again, maybe accentuating the bump, but um, hiding some of those like rolls that you maybe, you know, don't want to um, to show off? Yeah, I think the dress, again, the dresses that nip in and go out, the jumpsuits are so good for that, um, especially the sort of like looser boiler suits. Um, they can be really flattering and you can get the nice belted ones so you can show off bits that you do want to but it's kind of, I think people are sort of scared of boiler suits and things like that but they can look so flattering and just really cool as well um, and don't yeah, and I think you can dress those up and down can't you as well like big yeah. earrings and things I know I found that anyway exactly and we've got different footwear yeah I think that a jumpsuit or dungarees are a good investment I'd say during pregnancy and um, and we've had a few people as well that have come to us and said, well, you know, especially post lockdown, we're all quite reliant on our leggings, even if we're not pregnant, like we've got a bit, you know, cash and maybe we don't want to always have that look, you know, it's great to nip into the shops, like, you know, a Sunday with the family, but how about when you want to dress up the more comfy items like that? What would you suggest? So I, one of my looks, which I just wear all the time, is either tracksuit bottoms or leggings with just some cool boots, just putting on some chunky boots a leather jacket or a, or a more tailored coat. So like a long wool belted coat or a trench, anything like that. They work really well with leggings and joggers. And I think especially since lockdown, clothes like that are sort of considered smarter almost because you can get the smarter joggers, can't you? The knitted, the cashmere. Um, so I think it's sort of more acceptable to wear clothes like that when you're going out for lunch and things, whereas before it might've been considered a bit scruffy. I think yeah. we're, we're lucky, pregnant people now are lucky that it's a sort of regular item to wear out for lunch. And have you got any go-to brands for like, like more sports looks? Um, yeah, look. Um, I think for, yeah, I think a lot of the maternity brands, do, I think it is worth investing in things like maternity leggings because they, right. are, they tend to be thicker. They tend to offer more support and things like that. Um, and also the vests that you can wear under everything. So brands like Isabella Oliver um, and Seraphine that just do those leggings that really work and don't go sheer at all. Um, that said, H&M and ASOS, their maternity collections are excellent and they both do a lot of that kind of yeah. One thing that I know I had a problem with, and we had a few people again ask these kind of questions. How about if you're going to be breastfeeding afterwards? Like, there are times I remember putting on like a long jersey dress, just not even thinking about the fact that I'm going to be out, you know, breastfeeding in public. Yeah. Um, what, how would you say, you know, you can dress to breastfeed like in a more practical well, level? I've breastfed for quite a long time, and I always find the easiest thing is a separate top and bottoms. So a lot, of, a lot of dresses with buttons down and things are, they are breastfeeding friendly, but I think you feel like you have to still cover up a little bit because you're quite exposed. Um, I always just love a t-shirt or top with a nursing vest underneath, almost instead of a bra or as well as a nursing bra, because then you can just pull one. I'm not going to demo that one because I've not <laughs> <done that. laughs> Pull the top layer up 
and you've got the bottom layer still covering your belly the rest of your boobs so you've not got everything else on display and especially if you go for tops and nursing vests are the same color so my go-to is usually like a black v-neck t-shirt and a black nursing vest then it's so discreet that I think a lot of the time people don't even realize what you're actually doing um yeah. And then there's a brand called Bumper Milk, a new maternity brand. Um, and they do some beautiful dresses, some occasion dresses, some more casual dresses. Um, and they've got a really clever zip um, for breastfeeding. It's really sweet. You'd never know it was there, whereas it's not sort of made obvious like some brands do. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's a brand that I was judging the Junior Magazine Design Awards last year. Um, and they were an entrant for that. And everybody was just so excited about it because it was a really cool maternity brand that did actually really practical, lovely breastfeeding dresses. Moving on to baby then, what would you say you actually need for a newborn? Because I think we can all get a bit carried away with thinking we need a million things. And when they're first here, what would you say the essentials for their wardrobe? Well, you don't really need much. I mean, I'm as guilty of it as everybody else. Everybody loves cute baby clothes. I love love cute baby clothes but all you really need at the beginning is just a few basics it's the white vest here we go that that is a white vest basic white vest and sweet suits this one's a bit bigger because it's my daughter's now <laughs> rather than as a newborn i'd say between sort of eight and twelve um vests and sleep suits because you're going to be they they obviously get dirty quite quickly you might go through three or four a day so you want extras so that you can keep washing and drying, but you don't really need more than eight to 12 of them. You obviously want a really like, um, a really nice coming home from the hospital outfit. So we've got your Ickle Bubba one here, mm -hmm. <laughs> gender neutral as well. Um, I think, yeah, you always want a couple of nice outfits from the very beginning, don't you? For when family visit and all those lovely leaving hospital pictures. Yeah. Then just a couple of knitted cardigans or little jackets or a snowsuit, depending on the season. Um, and then some blankets, a couple of cellular blankets. And then I think the rest you can sort of wait and buy that once baby's here. I know a lot of people don't like to buy too much before baby's safe arrival and everything. But that's all I think that you really need to start with. Um, yeah, and then you can sort of get everything else when you see the gender and everything's okay. And... You say for parents like me and other mums who just want to dress their baby in cool, like more gender neutral um, items. Yeah, I'd say, which, do you mean which brands wear to Yeah, get? which brands, so, yeah. yeah. So lucky now, there's so many great brands that work for boys and are gender neutral, um, as well as all the usual cutesy girl things. Um, I think H&M on the high street, their conscious collection is fantastic. Arquette to do some really cool pieces. Um, I feel like they've got a really premium look at a really good price. Um, a lot of the Scandi brands do really good gender neutral. Um, Marmar Copenhagen, or I'll, I'll list all these brands somewhere afterwards for you. Um, Turtle Dove, which is a London independent brand, um, and that's fantastic price points as well. Um, and then Lindex and Newby, which are both on the high street here, but they're sort of lesser known. They both have a really good selection of, um, yeah, lovely baby things at different price points. And then Mini Redini as well is really great. That's one of my sort of go-tos, especially for my son, but for all of my children. Um, yeah, you get a lot of Mini Redini pre-loved as well, because I think it's so popular and a lot of the people that buy it do like to recycle it and yeah. They're little people, like, you know, we're not going to buy hundreds of pieces for them. Have you got any tips, like, how we can get new looks from the items that they do have in their wardrobe to mix it up a little bit? Well, I think it, with kids, it's really hard because they do grow out of things really quickly. So I think a lot, with siblings, it's easy because you can pass things down and everything. But I think with babies and children, as they grow, you've kind of got to just buy more. But buy my thing is always buy smart. So buy a few pieces that you love and that they'll wear a lot rather than buy a lot of maybe cheaper pieces that they won't wear very often. Um, oh, two at Sainsbury's as well. That's a good one. They always have such a fantastic selection, especially of baby girl and baby boy um, pieces. Um, yeah, really they've got some amazing stuff, haven't they? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's really great. I, yeah, I just bought a little white blouse for my own daughter. It's seven pounds, and it's exactly mm -hmm. the same as one that was seventy pounds on another website. Um, and then moving on from clothes, and what about like their shoes? Because I feel like, especially their first walkers, 
there's maybe, maybe one brand that everyone has in their mind and that's where you think you need to go for those shoes but what do you think about that yeah i've just written a post on this because there are so many other cool shoe brands um there's one of my favorites at the moment is zig and star who so these are my daughter's first walkers that we've just bought for her oh wow I mean, it's just that they have them in this colour. They have um, silver, different suede, um, just a really lovely selection. Um, and Bow Books as well have some really good first walkers, really cool little boots. Then there's an independent shop called Luna and Curious in London. Um, and they stock a brand called Petersil. And they have beautiful little red first walkers. Um, just, yeah, just something a bit different to that usual brand that everybody goes to. Um, and all of these independent stores are so helpful as well. They have guides that you can print out online for measuring. Um, they're normally really happy to chat to you on Instagram or the phone even um, to give advice. They can be really helpful. I think it's really good to support those brands as well. And yeah, I love their product more than that one on the high street that everybody goes to. And the prices are exactly the same. Um, I was going to ask you a question though about the sizing situation because I think that's one thing that maybe puts you off a little bit because obviously you're a bit unsure but if they've got clever guides like that then that's fantastic. And I know with these ones um, they're adjustable, the width is adjustable in them so it's not a case of a, a lot of the time at that shoe shop you want the width to work, I'm not explaining this very well but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> well, I think you've you've answered everything that we've had in so far. I mean, I've got one actually. It's about like prints and, and colours. Like, you know, what would you say your favourite brands are to find anything that's a bit more colourful and out there? So I love Bobo Toses, which is it it's a bit more expensive, but a lot of the stuff does go into the sale. So you can normally buy some really good pieces in the sales. And Mini Rodini as well, it's the same thing. And these brands, um, pre-loved you can buy really well as well i know you did dotter last week they have a lot of great pieces from those brands um yeah i think they're two of my favorites um, and then i love all the lovely scandi brands as well but zara is fantastic and arca my kids always have pieces from arca in their wardrobes and if we want to now go away but then come back to your website just to get regular inspiration like what can we expect to find on there so I'm, I'm doing more on my Instagram at the moment simply because of a lack of time. As I was telling you earlier, um, nurseries and childcare and all the juggle. Um, so I update my Instagram most days. Um, and it's supposed to be just an edit of the best baby and children's wear from the high street and beyond. Um, so I think there's a place for everything. I love the high street. We have an amazing British high street. But there are so many fantastic independent brands as well. That I like to showcase them and mix it all together. Um, so hopefully people can get inspiration of where to buy things, um, new brands to shop at, new ways to shop, um, yeah, and just cool pieces. Definitely. I think we can all relate to feeling like we don't have enough time. So if you've done the work for us, then we can all tune in and hopefully get the... Yeah, hopefully. Well done. <laughs>